Governor Mitt Romney and a new Des Moines Register poll. That's not the only poll, in fact. Uh, here to set the record straight, 2012 GOP presidential candidate Herman Cain. Herman, nice to have you back on the program with us. Hello, Jenna. Delighted to be here. Let's start with the truth. That's always the best place to start. What is the truth about these allegations of sexual harassment or sexual misconduct? Have you ever been accused at any time of either? Yes. I have never sexually harassed anyone. Let's say that. Secondly, um, I've never sexually harassed anyone. And yes, I was falsely accused while I was at the National Restaurant Association, and I say falsely because it turned out after the investigation to be baseless. The people close, the people mentioned in that article were the ones who would be aware of any misdoings, uh, and they have attested to my integrity and my character. It is totally baseless and totally false. Never have I committed any sort of sexual harassment. Have you ever had to settle a claim, falsely accused or not? Sometimes the settlement happens when a false accusation is made. Have you ever had to settle a claim, uh, given money or paid someone uh, because of a claim of sexual harassment or sexual misconduct? At the restaurant association, now outside of the restaurant association, absolutely not. If the restaurant association did a settlement, I am not even, I wasn't even aware of it and I hope it wasn't for much because nothing happened. So if that was a settlement, it was ha handled by some of the other officers that worked for me at the association. So the answer is absolutely not. Herman, so just to be clear, you have never sexually harassed anyone, but yes, you believe you have been falsely accused of sexual harassment. Correct. Have we, are we going to hear about any other allegations in the future? Are there more allegations to come like this? Absolutely not. If more allegations come, I assure you, people will simply make them up. I was aware of the false accusation that took place at the Restaurant Association, and then when we were asked for me to comment, they wanted for it to be from two anonymous sources. We weren't going to go and chase anonymous sources, but take a look at the end of the article, that's what I encourage people to do, and look at the people who have attested to my character and my integrity. What's next as far as this goes? What's the next step for the campaign? Will you be speaking about this further? Do you feel like it needs further explanation? What can we expect from your team as far as handling any more allegations in the future? First of all, as I indicated, the only other allegations will be trumped up allegations. There's nothing else. Uh, secondly, what you can expect from my campaign is for me to stay on message, for us to continue to do the things and execute our strategy in order to win the nomination. Now, obviously, some people are going to be turned off by this cloud that someone wanted to put over my campaign, but a lot of people aren't going to be turned off. We only, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But let me just say one more time, Jenna, I have never sexually harassed anyone, anyone, and absolutely, the, I, these are false accusations. Moving on to another report today uh, that came out of the Wisconsin uh, Journal Sentinel, this one having to do with campaign financing. And, and I'm skipping around here a little bit, but uh, this, of course, is also important. This, uh, this report talks about your uh, chief of staff, also your deputy chief of staff, that had a private corporation that the reports say funded different parts of your campaign early on. Now, there's some question about whether or not this private corporation was paid back for some of these expenses. And if they hadn't, that could be a violation of tax law, it could be a violation of campaign law as well. Will we see any amendment to your FEC filings? Will there be any change to some of your financial disclosures in the future? I'm not aware of this report, so my staff has not had time to go through it. And so I'm, I'm not aware of it, they're not aware of it. We are going to look at the report and see if there is any validity. So at this point, I can't say that that would be a modification because we don't know at this point uh, whether or not it's true or not. So we'll have to wait until we look at it. We will take a look at it. But at this point, I, I didn't even know about the report until you brought it up on the show. 
Okay, we're going to follow up with you on that, and we appreciate uh, your response to that question. Let's talk a little bit about the campaign itself. You had Good. some positive results over the weekend <laughs> having to do with the Des Moines Register, for example, in Iowa. You're on the top there. Also, when you look at Texas, there's a new poll out of Texas that actually has you leading the governor there, Rick Perry, which is also significant. We wanted to point out to, uh, to our viewers about that. You touched on this a little bit earlier, but because of these reports and because they're so new, I I'd just like to ask you how you plan on addressing them on the campaign. How do you think this is going to affect viewer, uh, viewers and voters, and, and what's your message to your voters uh, now that we see the results, but we also have these reports? My message to my supporters is quite simple. Uh, we are going to stay on message. Uh, these accusations and others that may come up, uh, they will continue to find out that they are baseless. We are going to leverage this momentum by continuing to stay with the message, and that is one of the things that I believe that has attracted so many people to my candidacy is that I have, had, I have proposed bold, specific solutions, like my 999 plan. Within the next couple of weeks, we are going to announce our energy independence strategy. Uh, we've also talked about my foreign policy philosophy. So we are gradually doing that, and because I'm specific and bold with some of these proposals, that's what's resonating with people, and I think I believe that that's what's being reflected in many of these polls that are coming out. Let me ask you about just your personal life as well. As you go further down this campaign trail, people want to know more about you. That's why sometimes these reports get a lot of traction, right? They want right. to know your character. They want to know about your integrity. They want to know about your family. We have yet to really meet your, your better half, and I'm editorializing there, but Gloria, your wife of more than 40 years, when will right. we see her on the campaign, uh, campaign trail? When will we uh, see more of your family out there? When will we get to know that side of you? You will meet my wife publicly in uh, an exclusive interview that we are currently uh, planning and anticipating, but you won't see my family out on the campaign trail on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's because it was a conscious decision because my adult daughter with her kids she has a life. My son, he has children. They have a life. And my wife represents that calm and tranquility that I look forward to getting to seeing when I get home. She will, be, uh, she will be introduced in terms of some limited exposure, but it's not her style for her to be with me on every campaign stop because, number one, it's grueling, and I want her to continue to be the, the nucleus for that calm and tranquility that you want from your family. I'm an unconventional candidate, as you know, and we're running an unconventional campaign, and the involvement of my family is also going to be unconventional, although you will see them uh, on a selected basis. We look forward to meeting them more, and we appreciate your time today. Herman, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. Enjoy.